He's home. <laughs> here's, go, here's Johnny. <laughs> here's Johnny. You're going to catch you then. Here's Johnny. Oh, that's freaky. That is an eye. An eye. That's scary, that. Oh, my God. That's a thumbnail, I think. That's our thumbnail. Whoa. What have I done? Don't be break. Whoa. Heavy <laughs> that's breaking. That's... I'll just check them pads out. Right, we're on with a new series. We're back with Richard Valentino. Another video for YouTubers. This is Pete C's Cortina City Fleet Maintenance, General Fleet Maintenance. We've done restorations. You've seen that. We've welded, we've painted, re-trimmed, we've fitted electronic control units. But this is all now about general maintenance. We've just come back from a 850 mile round trip to uh, the Highlands in Scotland and guess what happened on the way back I started hearing this noise and here's my description of the noise from the back axle wow 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 how long do you want me to go on for Rich wow 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 not that long anyway I lock up a wheel one side Richard turns the wheel the other side and guess what you can't turn the wheel the diff is locked what do you think it is Rich Planet Gears Planet Gear is seized up. Yeah, I'd I've, say so. I've never known that on a Mark III Cortina, all the fleets that I've used, but there's probably people out there in YouTube land, Cortina owners, or indeed the axle is on principle of it anyway, is on other Fords. But you hold this wheel here, you turn the other wheel, and you can't turn it. But they do spin opposite ways, so partially the gearbox, uh, the axle is working, but in terms of a diff, it isn't, and that might explain the resonating sound I was hearing on the way back on the uh, the M74. So something along the way on the trip to Scotland, the axle has thrown its hand in. Now, it wasn't the quietest axle in the world, so it needed to be investigated anyway. Um, we've got a replacement axle here. Whilst it's not painted and Concours looking, it is a rebuilt axle, hopefully. I bought it as a rebuilt unit. Uh, indeed, the half shafts which we borrowed for who do we buy the half shafts for? TNG. Borrowed the half shafts for TNG and the bearings were replaced. So the odds are that it is a good axle and it's been rebuilt. Indeed, even them top bushes could have been replaced. But we are putting in Flow Flex top bushes on it. In a nutshell, this axle's got to go on to the car. We've also got a secondary fault, and that is the fuel sender. And this will happen on your Mark Threes eventually. The pipe on the fuel sender has fractured on the solder join. I don't know if you can see it here, but on the solder join, we've now got a petrol leak as well. So we've got a fuel sender, braze point has broke, or solder point's broke, axle has seized up, or it's on its way out. That's got to be replaced, so I'm going to leave Richard with it. I've got to go to work. You don't make no money doing cars, so you have to go and do a day job. Pete goes off to do his day job. Here is a replacement fuel sender from Motor Mobile. If you want one, here's the code. Motor Mobile part number 14855312. We'll get you back in the game if you've got a knackered sender. The connector's different, so you have to make yourself a wire adapter to go onto your plug. Well, it's not a big deal to do. You have to just chop your plug and put the fittings straight onto these ring terminals. I'll be making an adapter probably or cutting the plug and saving the plug. Don't like to throw away an original plug. So big job broke out. Simple trip and big job breaks out. Um, picked up some grime as well. This is normally clean under here, but that's what you get when you hammer them on the motorway. Highlands of Scotland, the muddy road this time of year. We're in November. So, you know, roads are muddy and salty, but Cortina City is all year round. We don't, we're no trailer queens here, Richard. No, no trailer, trailer queens point. around here. We hammer them. That's what they're built for. Spread the love and spread the joy. The amount of people that commented on this car on the trip to Scotland, we brought love and happiness to all the road users at the expense of some grime. The axle, well, I had a suspicion about that axle anyway. I thought it was going to go at some point. But I've never seen it where it locks a wheel. 
never ever seen that larger drums of course on here nine inch nines let's have a look at the uh have i um do you want a crowbar that or a little bit of a, a wiggly jiggly along with our squeaky boots we do got different shoes on rich i'm not normally squeak i'm gonna wd your feet i think I'm squeaking for my sound effects well, I was actually yeah. Yeah, we are squeaky. I'm sorry about that, folks. At home, I'm squeaky. Let's have a look at the. Um... Using the uh, other side of the copper hammer. There you go. And um, what we like. Have I been burning out pads? Shoes, no. Shoes. I mean, shoes, shoes, shoes. I did put new ones on no, when I built no, the right car. Then. Okay. We'll live for another day. Even even where? Yeah. And my galvanised springs holding up nicely. We can give that a clean up. But uh, looking all right in there. And the handbrake is good on this, isn't it? it looks Very like good. Really good handbrake on it. So that was um, something I did when I built the car. So that's held out. It's just that the axles decided to see. So you're guessing on Planet Gears. Yeah. It'll be very interesting later on in the day, I'll be back later, to look at the condition and see if you can actually identify what's seized up. We are definitely sure that this is the case, aren't we? Yeah. So when you lock that side or, or either side of the axle, you should be able to turn a wheel, yeah? Yeah, well that's how a diff works, isn't it? If you get one wheel that's stuck, the other one should rotate. That's why you can't wheel spin so much with these, because it just lights one wheel up. Mm -hmm. Whereas this is trying to light both up. Mm -hmm. So I had a limited slip diff, did I? <laughs> a welded diff. Mm. I know that's your trick on the... Uh, the, the yeah, that uh, used to be my trick, welding the planet gears up, yeah. Mm. Okay, we'll leave you to it. We'll be back soon. I might leave the camera for Richard. Next door's putting a new roof on, so you might hear some banging noise. They're putting a new roof on the house next door. Apologies for that, but uh, there you go. So, Pete leaves into Richard's cable hands and he may do some little clips himself. I don't know. We'll see. Catch in a sex for axle replacement and later on when I get back fuel sender replacement. Stop that. We could smell uh, fuel as soon as we um, came into the workshop this morning. I must admit we've not smelt it before so it's a new fault. Yeah. We've also got a leaking sender, uh, speed sensor on the gearbox leaking as well. That needs uh, some RV on it. Probably the gasket, the uh, rubber uh, o-ring seals probably letting oil go past it so some fleet maintenance so these videos are all about using a cortina on a daily basis and hammering it you know stuff like this happens look that was clean when it went out well you have to keep them clean and uh, and on the road you're going to pick up stone chips there's no way around it so trailer queens beware trailer queens turn away now trailer queens look away look away uh, daily drivers Welcome aboard, all you Mark Free daily drivers. Use them in the winter. There's nothing wrong with it. Just keep on top. I'll see you in a sec. Right, quick update while Pete's not here. And a quick little tip for you. Axle's now off. Ruby. But the main thing I wanted to show you, and a bit of a tip for you, if you're going to be doing this on your Mark Three or possibly Capri or something, if your rear brake shoes, let me just get this camera, I'm not good with this camera with Peter's. If you look down here, quick little tip, if you're taking your half shafts out, you don't need to strip your rear brakes. Of course you've got to take your rear brake pipes off, your steel ones running across the axle. But you can leave all your shoes and everything complete. They're all set up, ready to go back on, barra clean. All we used to get the half shaft out was showing it around the other side. It's a homemade one, but it does the job. Find it here. It's just when the camera finds it, slide hammer and a plate welded. At the end of it, this thing goes through your two holes in the front plate. This side looks quite suspect on the bearing. It's very rusty. I'll have to do some investigating on that before it goes back together. The job now is take you back round 
to this side gives me these bushes to swap over poly bushes to go into the new axle which is sat there so I'm going to get the removal tool now and remove them ones the old ones out of this Let's see them there removal tool, remove them out and put the new poly bushes in I can get it back on the car then I'll speak to you in a bit just another quick little update one side of the bushes around and I'll take you around to this side and show you the process simple tool, push pull tool cup on one side sleeve on the other to drag the bush through and it's just a case of I'm quite lucky with this one and quite not bad to do and that just simply pulls the bush through and there it goes one bush back out tool isn't needed for the new poly bushes you can just see over there they're a lot simpler to fit so, both bushes out now new bushes in in a second and ready to go back on the car see you in a bit Permission to use lethal force has been approved, bringing the crocs sandy. <laughs> Permission to destroy Richard's crocs sandy granted. <laughs> Back, get to the chopper! Mark! Get to the chopper! You may ask why mess with serrated plates. These are serrated plates, by the way, and they're ones I've salvaged off other Cortinas throughout the years. Now, you can buy serrated plates, you don't need to use Cortina ones. But then we haven't answered the point why you're messing with serrated plates. Well, here's the reason why this is a rebuilt axle here. You know that we took the other axle off. And by the way, Richard, when we said the axle was seized. We lied, the car was in park. I wonder if any keen ideas picked that up. Try putting the car in neutral when you try and turn your wheels your way round. Anyway, it wasn't a good, it is a noisy axle, and you'll see that uh, we've been swapping bearings as well. I'll get back to this in a minute, by the way, I've not forgotten. But Richard kindly uh, took us to a garage where they had a, a 10 ton press, and we've managed to fit new bearings on the half shafts. Um, you can get in these off at home folks you can heat this up if you don't mind destroying the old bearing or you can split them with an angle grinder slitting disc and just chisel, or chisel them off but we heated it up with the oxy in the process and created quite a few fumes because we burnt the old bearing but it didn't matter came off anyway the reason we took this off without destroying it is my bearing didn't come with the um, the retaining ring there whatever you call that the pressed ring so we had to salvage it so new bearing went on because that one was wobbly but well, the old one was wobbly look at that so ruby's axle was noisy and also wheel bearings were gone so that was a high mileage axle it's never been replaced at the time i did the car so it makes sense 
anyway, a new axle, courtesy of Dave, came in as a rebuild, and we do believe it's rebuilt because everything on it seems to be new, new gaskets here, I can see new pinion uh, seal at the front, and I've no reason to doubt Dave's words that this axle here is professionally rebuilt, okay? Now it's not the prettiest casing in the world, but we're going to line it up first before we do any paint work, if we indeed do any. But, and here it is, back to the straight plates everybody, this is a later axle which is fixed. There's these saddle clamps here which go on your lower arms, you'll notice if you know the cutting, your shock absorber bolts there, they on later cars just have a circular hole. We've had to enlarge this hole here and we're making locking plates. Reason, we need to be able to alter the angle of the pinion, the nose of the axle by the pig's head. There's the pig's head. Call the pig's head because it looks like a pig's head. End of the axle, the pinion end, the nose needs to be opposite angle of the angle of the gearbox. We'll show you that on the board in a minute, but this is all to do about drive angles. So, almost uh, all Cortina engines point slightly down. You'll notice this if you look at your, um, your crankshaft pulley at the front of the engine. Have your car sat level and take a reading, probably about between three and four degrees pointed down. Helps when you have a crash, sends the engine under the car, various other reasons, but your engine points down and the crankshaft transmits the power all the way through on the centre line till it comes out of the back of the gearbox. That could be a manual gearbox or an auto, but all of the drive shaft is in a perfect straight line through. So you end up exiting, pointing down. And in our case here on the board, it is pointing down by 4.7 degrees. Your Cortina may point down by three degrees. This is taken when your car's level. If you use a inclinometer, I've got one somewhere, you can zero it, your car doesn't have to be level, you can actually take it on the, on the hill if you want, as long as you zero your inclinometer, and then you'll get the relative angle difference. Anyway, the point being is that we're pointing, point, point, pointing down. The axle has to point the opposite way, the same degree, plus 0.5. So um, if I'm down 4.7, my axle needs to come up 4.7 plus 0.5. Why plus 0.5? because the needle bearings on the um, on the propeller shaft operate better with a slight angle on them. If you run them parallel, it doesn't um, get the uh, needle bearings working, so you tend to go slight angle on your UJs. So I'm down there, I'm up by the same amount, plus 0.5, it can be 0.5 this side or that side, irrelevant. You end up with a, a nice number, would be 1.5, uh, 1 to 1.5 slope, on your prop shaft and that's how it works if you don't get these right you get a whip effect because by the nature of a uj if they're not completely parallel either end one actually turns in a different circle than the other and you actually end up inducing vibration it's quite an interesting phenomenon and there's a great video on youtube you find it if you put in pinion angle calculator or pinion angle explained guy with a credit card puts it on a rotating shaft with teeth and it makes a vibration sound and you can hear it by moving it in different positions uh, you hear the, the sound of the credit card flipping on the little light on spokes on your bike when you put them on your bike uh, it was your kid and it made that flappy noise he does that and you can hear the noise changing because the angles aren't parallel as soon as you get to those angles parallel the noise is the same all the way along it's a very interesting video that so we had to make this axle adjustable and to lock it in place we use serrated plates we're going to weld them onto there and that's how an original mark III axle would have the setup why they became fixed later i don't know so the question being how come later cortina axles weren't adjustable i do not know but the early ones were certainly on k's uh, j k's and maybe early l's you had these serrated plates enabling you to twist the nose of your diff casing where you needed it to be to match your prop shaft and gearbox angles. So I'm going to weld them off, but we're destroying Richard's crocky. He bought a crocky and it's going to get used here. So we're going to do a few more of those. Crocky is good for making a hole. Um, they're normally, by the way, welded to the axle. 
we've had to make our own. They normally come with the axle that side, and then the other plate is just freestanding in my hand, but we're going to weld these to the axle so we can lock it. Let's carry on with that. Enough waffle as a bramble ramble. See you in a sec. Yappy. Yeah. That's what we do this side now as well folks. Same over here and then we're ready to put the axle back on. Let's get this side done and we'll see you underneath the car for reassembly as you can see. We're all in bits down here and as I mentioned earlier when we did do the initial test whilst the axle was noisy we could hear bearing noise and rumbling it wasn't locked keen eyes would keen viewers would have noticed it <laughs> we had the car in park inside Andy been right on us like a ton of hot bricks see you in a sec yeah, that's, uh... we're gonna just clean these out with the die grinder but I'm going to try and weld this so it actually works. Right, here we go, my end. Are you ready, Richard? Ready. Double glasses don't work. I've got a cheetah lens in. Move them so they don't get sparked. Your eyes, Richard. My eyes. Here we go. We're now at the reassembly of the axle stage. We've positioned all the nuts and bolts in. It's easy to have your springs loose as you offer the axle up, otherwise you, it's hard to get the spring to go into its seat at the top of the socket of the chassis fork. So have these springs here wobbling about and then using a jack, you can jack the axle up into position. Everything lines up pretty easily. Make sure your springs seat in a correct orientation into the uh, chassis fork because there is an indent to receive the shape of the end of the, the spring. And also you've got on my car anyway you have these cups which lock the spring on at the bottom not all cars have them some are just a, a press fit into there well not a press fit but they just rest off uh, pressure these early ones have a locking plate you can just see it and that clamps the spring down to the lower radius arm i'll go around this side which should carry on Of course, you remember we fitted a new fuel sender and it's in. I've made an adapter plug. I just touch it with a torch now. Let me just see where I am. Sometimes it's hard to get where you are. There we go. Yeah, there. Did it? I didn't want. I couldn't bear to chop the Ford's fuel tank sender plug off, so I made an adapter using bolts. Actually, two sides of bolts fit as the male lugs to plug into the loom. Then I've greased it up. So we don't get any corrosion. So I've packed that with grease that connector. I'll put the torch on it again so you can see. So that's an adapter that I've made to keep the actual original Ford plug. And then you'll see the new sender just there. These pipes, by the way, uh, these were those overbraid pipes. If you've got overbraid pipes on your car, get them off right now um, because they're just going to crumble to destruction. These and have gone soggy already. We want R6 minimum on there fuel line it's gonna go and you're gonna have leaking lines we've replaced all bar these ones at the back on ruby i think all the other cars have been replaced but these horrible horrible well they're not they weren't horrible at the time they're only horrible now you've got e10s and these new fuels which will attack these pipes so these are due to be replaced in fact we're going to make a trip out to the hydraulic uh, firm that supply us with our tubing and get some more tubing in stock today 
because uh, Tina G needs a vacos. We had some vacos. We've, we've, we've refurbished the bay on Tina G. We'll show you that later. Tina G's had a freshen up in the engine bay and we've just been replacing some hoses there, noticing that the vac hose was perished, but we had a piece that wasn't long enough. So we're going to go and restock on fuel line and vac hose line. And indeed, I'll probably get some water hose while I'm there. In the meantime, we carry on getting the axle in. Here are the bolts at the end that are adjustable. In fact, on Richard's side, you'll see it better because it's facing my way. Richard points it out now, the bolts. Let me just stabilise you here. You can appreciate at home, it's not always easy filming in this environment, but there we go. A centre screen for your serrated plate, and that will lock the nose angle of the diff either upwards or downwards in our case it's most likely going to be pointing up all the time simply because the gearbox and uh, engine point down so we can lock it in exactly the right place and it shouldn't slip in the future anti-roll bar is removed for this operation because the spring retaining cup bolts are obscured by the anti-roll bar I'll show you what I mean by that. Here's the spring and the retaining cup bolt is underneath. Just see it there. You cannot access that bolt without removing the anti-roll bar. It's not a big deal. So Richard's now talking up his spring cup retaining bolt. I'll be doing the same this side or if I'm lazy, I'll just let Richard do everything as usual. There he is. He's at home on the floor. He loves to be riving around in pools of oil. And also when he's working on cars, he likes to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so fleet maintenance then, that's the point of this video. We, we started off with a, a bum steer. I don't know, I think it's both of us to blame. Oh, Richard might have been having a bad day when we tried to it was too early in the morning. Too early right. in the morning for us to realise that you cannot get a um, rotation on an axle when you lock the opposing wheel if the car is in a gear or in park, especially on an auto where the park pole actually physically locks the tail shaft output. On a, on a manual gearbox, you would have probably tried to have turned the gearbox or slipped the clutch, perhaps. So, uh, yeah. A look of sheer determination on Richard's face <laughs> as he uh, talks things up with those arriving muscles from Brussels are back, folks. A lot of requests coming in for that. Don't know why, but when will Richard be flexing more muscles? We do cater for all tastes on this channel. And Richard is the star of the show these days. Pete C taking a, a back seat and not doing as much as he usually does. Instead, farming it out to the muscles from Brussels. <laughs> there we are, we continue to go. Brake disc, uh, brake backing plates across there, they go on later on. Not a big deal about that. Half shafts have got to go in, of course, with our lovely new bearings. So, this should see a smoother operation on the motorway. I did notice coming back from Glencoe, I've been in Scotland cruising in the car, did notice the whining began to increase and then we got this noise which I simulated early on in this film which was wow 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 which I think is a wheel bearing sound I've heard it before and then when it gets really bad you can always tell which bearing's gone because you take a left or right turn it loads the side that's faulty and you hear the noise exaggerated but both bearings on this weren't the best so we've got two new bearings on a completely rebuilt axle and at the rate we're going, we're going to have to completely rebuild Rich, Richard. <laughs> I need it. Right, we're now going to set the pinion angle. So we've got, you've got to load the car up as though it was sat on its wheels. And to do that, <clears throat> we just put the jack under the, the base. You have to be careful, I suppose. When you do do that, you can distort the diff casing and it can leak. It's a common mistake, which we've just made. So we're loading it up until it just starts to come off the axle stand. So I'm going to watch this cloth and it'll just see some movement starting to go. I want to wait till I'm just off there. 
because the car is reasonably level. So we go too high, right? You're off that now, Rich. Yeah. So then just you just go a, t a little bit down, but I don't need much. You see, the thing is, you probably won't get that little bit down. I would s go at that. Let me just see how level the car is. Here's our magical tool, which is the digital projector. You can use your mobile phone. There's a few apps available where you can use it as an inclinometer. And indeed, there is an app which actually does your calculations as well. Let's see if I can find it. If you Google Pinion Angle app, it will come up on Google. Stick this on here. Car is resting at 0.4. Now, I don't have a reset. I don't think there's a reset on this to give it as a hold, but there isn't a reset. Okay, so half a degree. Hang on, sorry, I was not filming that there. I do apologise. There we go. I'm resting at 0 0.46, which is okay because it's relative angles, which will do. But it's best just to have a roughly be level. That simulates the car at ride height. You could argue that the suspension at the front alters the um, angle, but I don't think that it does because the wishbones just pivot out of the way leaving the um, the engine doesn't actually move relative to the front we've actually got the front on axle stands really all four wheels should be supported uh off the ground so you would do this on either um, a four post no not a four post lift you do it on a drive on ramp or you do it in a pit or you'd block your wheels up or you'd put four ramps under each wheel so that the car is under driving load now you could argue as well that you would put some weight in the car to simulate an extra passenger because if you are right on the tolerance of your angles and then a passenger gets in you may notice then that the drivetrain angle if it was right on its extreme would then drift into the uh, the realms of where you'd get the the vibrations <clears throat> so you, there is an operating window of opportunity um you can go from zero as we said a zero angle but that's not good for the needle burn so 0 0.5 to 2 is really where you want to be 1.51 1 being ideal so if we set this up for one that will give us an extra degree for when a passenger gets in and the axle itself begins to change its angle of um, inclination toward the gearbox because of course as you can imagine um, when you load the car the axle does change its angle so you would think, how can this be? If I've got a fully laden car, will I not get a noisy prop shaft? That is true, that does happen. But the idea would be that it would be working unladen at say 0.5 and then laden at two and still be in its operating zone. Indeed, if probably if you drifted to two and a half angle, you might still be okay and not get drivetrain noise. But once you start drifting to threes and fours, you're gonna get whipping on your prop shaft, okay? I've got a, set, a sense, uh, backwards. I've got a single piece prop. So many of you will have split props, but that doesn't really matter because you're still measuring those angles. Split props may require a different procedure than how I'm doing this. And I'm not familiar with it, so I can't help you on that. But the principles will be the same. So I'm going to show you on the board now exactly what we're doing because that may or may have not made sense depending on how good my explanation technique is here's the board we have the engine and gearbox here you can take the reading of the inclination of the engine on the pulley at the front if you want or you can take it off the output shaft of the automatic gearbox or your manual gearbox if you take out the drive shaft prop shaft bear in mind when you do that oil will try and escape i have a blanking piece which i insert you have to quickly pull the prop out oil starts to come out quickly shove the blanking piece in which is basically a cut down prop just stops oil pouring out but anyway the engine and your cortina points downwards when you have a crash it sends it underneath the car there may be other reasons why they point the transmission down as well you can get your measurement there in our case it's 4.7 degrees slope downwards at the back currently or when we mocked up those plates the axle was sat at 6.8 degrees pointing upwards and that's the key thing 
you don't want them pointing the same way and that's because I'll explain that in a minute but what you want is hold on I'm gonna to have to take a call I'll be right back I had to take a phone call I'm really sorry about that we were saying uh, that about the angle so the engine points down on my case 4.7 axle points up 6.8 when you subtract those two angles you come up with 2.1 we'd like that to be 0.5 so we're going to point the um, nose down a bit more to get this number less because that is the resulting angle of the UJs that's how it works and using those serrated plates and uh, was a enabled us to move the axle where we wanted it to be the reason why these angles are critical is because of the way a UJ works if your prop shafts here let me get up to the top it does help if I film where I'm drawing you've got a UJ at each end of the prop and when the, the and the UJ obviously that connects to the axle, that connects to the gearbox. This speed here, the rotation speed there, is different. And, the, and I wouldn't think it would be the case, but it is that there's different rotational speeds at either end when it's not a straight zero degree line straight through. As soon as you move a UJ, its speed is different from the the other side. So. This angle is different than that angle, then they both turn at different speeds. That creates, that creates centrifugal force, which throws it out of sync. The idea is to get this one spinning the opposite to this one in terms of the speed. So they cancel each other out. You do that by having, let's say, that, that one one degree up and that one one degree down on its angle. So that this one's now chucking the forces this way. And this one's chucking the forces the opposite way by the same amount, therefore cancelling out the centrifugal force generated at each end. It's weird how a UJ generates an offset force, but it does just the way that it's designed. And you wouldn't think that something here could turn at a different speed than that end, because you'd think, isn't this a fixed item? But it's not by the time you reach the knuckle of the UJ. It actually creates a different rotational speed, so they've got to be exactly opposing each other. And the best way to do that is to get it so you've got about a 0.5 degree angle. You can, if that's not made any sense, I do apologise. You can get more detailed explanations on the internet. But we've got to set this car up so that the prop shaft has between 0.5 and 2 degrees pitch on it here when the car is sat level and loaded. So we're hoping by the end of the day when we lock it all together and I put the protractor onto the prop itself it will be either 0.5 or maximum two i'd like it to be one to be fair one degree so we're going to head for that now more detailed explanation of of uh, universal joints and what you would call prop shaft balancing what you'd call um the physics of uj's there is a term for it. i'm trying to think now setting up your your angles it is out there on youtube I'm not going to go into it any more than that, except to say that on a Mark III Cortina, we've used those serrated plates to create the swing on the axle. And uh, other people have packing pieces on like 4x4s and off-road vehicles. When they're on leaf springs, they'll use packing wedges that will twist the axle. But we've effectively created a system where we can twist the axle. And indeed, on early Cortinas, the serrated plates were part of the design. They then got rid of it. Someone did reason that they could have altered the length of the lower arms to also create the same effect, and that's what they could have done on later cars because we've been reading recently in Classic Ford Mag that ideal suspension setups involve using lower arms off Mark 5s, which tells us that perhaps there are different lengths of lower arm which could create the same effect as twisting your axle. So if you wanted to, indeed this one did have this, where it's cut down, by a couple of mil and shortened. You can actually shorten these lower arms. You can put a fillet piece in. I did that initially when I was trying to get this right. So we've got actually on this a slightly shorter lower arm and also an adjustable plate. Don't forget the reason why I'm working on this is because I've got an A4 gearbox which created a whole different um, transmission line, geometry and uh, dynamic. The whole thing was slightly different because it's got the Ford Granada A4 gearbox. I'll just show you that now, because you might be wondering, well, why is all this happening? Why did I just bolt it up as Ford did? Well, look, underneath here, there is an A4 box. It's longer by 116 mil, 11.6 centimetres longer, which meant a customised prop shaft, which that is. It's a single piece custom prop, 
which altered the geometry because the mounts for the A4 box are custom made and I had to approximate the position of fitting the gearbox mounts that to chop the old ones off and put new mounts back into the car. In fact, if you've not watched the videos of how I've built these cars, I've done two like this now. I'll show you the mounts on this car just so that you know. We'll go in under to show you those mounts now. If I get my glasses right, again, difficult to see, but here we are. And the mounts are under there holding the gearbox up. And they're custom made mounts. So the whole geometry on this was altered. When I made the mounts, I did mock them up with the angle of the front pulley relative to the car in mind. And indeed you could cross check that by placing the fan uh, pump on the water pump onto the engine block, putting your radiator in and just mocking it up and you should have a parallel distance of the fan and the radiator. If your engine was tilted too far down, you would start to crash your fan blades into the radiator. We're going to carry on now. That's enough waffle. With the axle back on and the angles checked, we're getting in the figures that we want. The adjustable serrated plates are just the other side of the bolt here. So what we did, check the angle. So I had four degrees pointing down in the end on the gearbox output shaft. That meant I'd like about five, five degrees pointing up on the nose of the pinion of the back axle, which it is. You can go a little bit more. Now, just some emery paper on the inside of the end of the axle where the wheel bearings go, cleaning up. And then the backing plate back on, we've kept the handbrake cable on. So this now offers back up there, and then half shaft goes in. We've actually built our own half shaft pull as well, if you want to have a look at it, if you want to make one. Richard put the bar on the end. I got this from Car Boot Cell, just the actual slide itself. And it was chopped off at this end, I don't know what they'd used it for, but we just put a little bar at the end and you can lock that on to your end of your half shaft over there sorry that's not it there is the half shaft so just locks on and pulls the half shaft out you do need a puller most times to get the half shafts out it's a two-handed job now so i'm going to offer this up and uh, insert the half shaft with its new bearing you can see the new bearing there they're sealed unit they will lubricate with the uh, gear oil inside the Gear, uh, axle itself as well so we're going to knock that in that's a clean surface there so that's ready to go in so we shall assemble Richard's doing a clone of what I'm doing on his side we've quickly wiped down the backs of the plates just to clean them back up these were originally powder coated okay so we're looking good for reassembly see you in a sec with the axle all assembled we're now going to Bleeding the back brakes because of course when the axle comes off we've got to take off the back brake line which introduces air into the system so we easy bleed on the back axle as you probably know there's only one bleed nipple because it feeds through the other cylinder and out this side that's on the off side Richard loosens up the 11 bleed nipple connecting the drain tube for the easy bleed I'll show you the easy bleed now I'm going to feed this through to Richard so in case you aren't familiar with Easy Bleed. I have covered it in other videos, but there's no harm in going over it again. A jump in the video. Sorry about that. Really rich. That's Richard over there, in case you don't know him. There he is. Look, he's powered by Lucasaid today. Drinks the stuff like the Amber Nectar. I've got my Red Bull's in the fridge. I'm going to get it after we've done this. Um, okay. Yeah, sorry about that. I'll take a phone call. But what we do is... The Easy Bleed system... As mentioned, we have covered it before. However, we'll cover it again. There's no harm in doing that. It works off the air pressure from your tyre. Okay, so as long as your tyre's inflated, I'll only do, say, minimum pressure, 20 PSI. But we've gone beyond that before now. Don't tell anybody. Fill this bottle here with your brake fluid, clean fluid, of course. Comes with a little hook on a Cortina. You're able to hook it into the bonnet just like this. So the cap screws securely onto the reservoir. Now we go for that. Do you know what? All my life I've been doing this without filling the bottle up. 
I used to think that was an air trap and it's not. It does work if you don't fill that up. You have to keep unscrewing this and topping up the reservoir. This system puts the fluid in as you go. Pete C did not know this. Right, that's the only thing you've got to watch is that cap. It can fizz out of that cap, so make sure you're tight. That cap goes on. This connects to the tyre. That man over there, 111 mil bolts when I pressure up. You ready to, for me to pressure up, Mr. Richard? Ready when you are. Well, I pressure up here. Um, as I do it, it's a little tip for you. Point, put it on, and then, but then watch your reservoir and make sure it doesn't seep out. Now, I'm watching that carefully, and I've got this cloth ready. I seem to be good to go. So off you Oh my God, we've got a, there's an accident. It's what? burst. Uh, hold on, hold on a minute, lads. We've got a problem. I'll tell you what, folks, you saw it here first on Court in the City. Never before have I seen this. You could argue it's because I've got 32 PSI in the tire, but I doubt it. If there's a fracture in my reservoir bottle and it actually sent a jet of fluid straight across the engine and has wrecked the whole job. I poured water over it. I've no idea if I'm going to da damage my paint now. No, you are. But um, that wasn't good. That's the last thing you expect. Easy Bleed is a really good system. I've never seen a fracture in a master cylinder reservoir. Luckily, it's in the top part. The fracture could have always been there, perhaps, but I thought I heard a crack. We'd have to play the video back. I thought I heard it actually split. But what a strange thing to happen. There isn't even... Is it on a dividing line? Is it on a weakness of the bottle, perhaps? Um, these bottles, a nice girl in one like that, hard to get, and a bastard to fit. Sorry about the swearing, but this fitting into here is not the most pleasant experience in the world to do. Can be changed. Uh, can go back in. Trying to get a new one of these is difficult. The barb on the end notoriously rips when you try and extract them. We've used hot water before now. We've used heat guns. It's a hit and miss affair to separate a reservoir bottle from the master cylinder without damaging the, the barb. It's a one-way barb that slots into the top. Could be done. Not nice. But uh, yeah, there you go. Now, I'm hoping I've not done any damage. We're going to have to wash it down the water. Uh, there was a jet went over my air cleaner and it also landed on the wing that side. Nasty. A sting in the tail for today, but it just goes to show nothing always works to plan. And I've never seen a fractured, and you would think that you could take that could take 50 psi. You wouldn't think that would blow. So I think something's over time that's gone brittle and the easy bleed has exposed the weakness. You saw that shoot out and me panic, and that was a panic because. Great fluid notoriously lifts paint. Anyway, that's the position we've got. We're going to have to hope. I'm going to wash down, get the car outside and wash down now. Hopefully the brake fluid won't have started to eat in. Richard puts the wheels on, not hanging about full throttle at Cortina City. So, high, high, low dramas all the time. We'll bled at the back. Let's just see. By the way, the axle feels stiff. Me and Richard are dubious. Are dubious about this axle. It's from... A dubious supplier as well, but it does show signs that it's been built, all new bearings in the axle. It just felt very stiff to rotate. Now we have put fluid in it and hand turned it first, sort of to prime it up if you will. But the axle is, re is newly rebuilt, but felt really stiff and no, no, notchy. So we're, we're a bit frightened actually, to be fair, about this axle. Um, although, as I said, upon inspection, it's clean. There's all new seals, there's new bearings. But have they just put bearings in and, and screwed us? Have we been done over? There's only yeah, one no. way to find out. We have to get out on the road as quickly as we can. We need to do this as quickly as we can so we can get round and beat Dave up. <laughs> While we're changing the fuel sender, we decided to renew the brake lines at the back. They've been done at the front. You can see this is the... Uh, hold on, so that's recenter. This is the braided stuff already looking rubbish. So we got rid of that and put on this higher grade pipe. It's a thicker wall, same internal diameter, but better rated 
now we're going to go and test that axle so moment of truth there's oil in the axle ep90 went in fuel gauge now reads just under a quarter it'll probably rise a little bit when i boot the car up voltage is down a touch that count that there's no guarantee that that fuel sender is calibrated the same although we did raise and lower it and it did read a full deflection on the gauge we'll have to see i'm not convinced 100 percent let's get out on the road and see if this axle is noisy or not it's the moment of truth let's go now we don't need to be on the road. Well, well, guys, we have an epic fail. Uh, we have been ripped off. Listen to this for crap axle. Oh, Rich, show them, show them what it's all about. I think that's enough. Make sure it decelerates before you put your foot on the brake. You can. Well, I've done that before, where it's still spinning so fast, and you put your brakes on on something that's doing like hundreds of miles an hour. Um, no, with Ruby's axles off, and Ruby's axles in better condition than the reconditioned axle that I've bought. So I've been sold a duffer. We think that the axle has been probably rebuilt, but stood so long that some of the bearings have probably seized. Now the noise, I've had the stethoscope under there. Here's Ruby's taken apart and we have made a note of where everything goes, including the crush washer and everything else. Here is uh, the pinion. It sounds like the front pinion bearing has, has gone. Because as the stethoscope goes further towards the rear of the casing, the, the noise gets quieter. And indeed the planet, uh, or whatever they're called, well the bearings whatever these carrier bearings for this because that's the carrier isn't it yeah. these carrier bearings they sound quiet in the axle they may have survived but the axle was stored dry which was never a good thing i was always suspicious and uh, i'm gonna have to talk to the person i bought it off because really this we've wasted a whole day's labor we've wasted all our time we've learned a few things along the way but no time is ever truly wasted really but we have we are now behind schedule. This should have been out and the next car in. Swampy's due in next. So at Cortina City Workshop Day, um, we've learnt things because we've managed now to become masters of setting up the pinion angles. And so the pinion angles, we did, we did take the car out for a drive, although the camera fell down the seat, but we did take it out for a drive and the prop shaft, there's no noise at 70 mile an hour. So that was good. So that, that theory worked with our adjustable serrated brackets but what we didn't count on was was so it was the axle going to be um was the axle going to be faulty you know you just wouldn't expect this we did worry about it because it seemed stiff when we were placing in the uh, prop shaft and rotating the prop shaft for the uh, four prop shaft bolt flange bolts it seemed stiff then and, and the stiffness was probably what do you think to this rich the stiffness was probably on this on the bearing inside here. I don't think it would have been that because I think it would have took it out in another way. Yeah. Uh, I think the torque would have got amplified at that point. No, these. You know, oh, yeah, you those got, ones, um, yeah. You've got another set of bearings which are oh, sat yeah. behind the seal. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what I meant, yeah. I yeah. showed them on here. Yeah. So, as I say, it's either one or two bearings, definitely. They've just, they've, just, they've just rusted. They're probably rusted solid. And that's the end of that. Now, I don't know what to do. We don't know whether we can pull the axle apart on the car um, and take the um, the crown, the pinion out, crown, the, take the carrier off, this carrier, take that all off as one unit, extract out the bearings and put new ones in. We don't know what to do. I've got the forward workshop manual in. Now, don't get me wrong, I can't build an axle, and I don't think Richard can, in terms of setting the crown wheel to pinion angle because it's done with this engineer's blue it seems to be a complex process which is left for specialists we don't know if we can actually just take this apart replace the bearings and then reassemble it using the original crush washer in theory would give the original alignment with that pinwheel uh, pinion wheel and 
and crown wheel. So I don't know. We've actually got nothing to lose because we've got to give the axle back. So we don't know what we're going to do tomorrow. We're actually stuck. But it's the end of the day for us. We've got to go because we've just burned out the whole day on this. We'll see you shortly. Pete Seacor, Team C in there. We've got to go home. We're tired. Bye. Well, roll barks will be dropped. Because you can't get the cover off. We're going to inspect this first and see exactly how we've been ripped off. Well, I don't think it's like a deliberate rip off. It's just a, it's a bit carelessness you ever stored the axle and sold me as a, a ready to go axle which it probably was in its life at some point oh we on miniature no, uh, I'll just get the ratchet out of the middle get in between the tank so as I said last night well it was last night for you it's the same few minutes of film uh, yeah it's noisy as hell and with the stethoscope the noise was coming primarily from the pinion end, so makes life tricky because we don't think we'll be able to set up this. We're into territory of axle building. Oh, ooh, ooh. ooh. Only about nine or ten more to go, right? Yeah. Ooh, ooh, all tight. No, thank you. No, thank you. Let's see what we, what horrors we reveal on this three seven five atlas. The horror. The horror. Messy time. Messy play time. Custard time. Smelly stuff time. Jelly time. Splush time with your girlfriend. Here we go. Arvid or... Hey, that'll give us an indicator of the quality of the work. Whilst Arvid's probably better. That sounds RV to it me. It is RV. It was all around the bolts. You see, you know, why not go and get a proper Reams gasket? Why just take a shortcut on RV? Oh, we'll just bang the RV on. We can't be arsed ordering a Reams gasket. I'd like to see the edge of a nice gasket. You know, it just looks better. Looks more quality, doesn't it? That's, that's stuck on, like... <laughs> that's, that's good, RV. Yeah, I know it's better. <laughs> no, I'm saying that's good stuff to have used, at least. I'll end up bending a, the flange here. I know, yeah. We'll have to go even with both of us. Or we'll blade in. Do you want to try and get a blade in there? Oh, yeah. Just run the blade round. Just give it a gentle pry all the way round. <sighs> Hang on, guy, folks. I'm not wasting camera time on this. We'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, well, the condition of the oil is our new oil. But yeah, but it's gone rusty coloured. It's gone the colour of rust. It's just that should be a nice clear high point. Uh, it's not RV, it's just clear silicon. <laughs> oh no, you botcher. Horrible botcher. Oh, has he done gasket and silicon? Don't tell me he's just done silicon. Uh, oh! <laughs> oh it's been underwater! It's ruined! Told you rust. It's been under. It's ruined! What a joke! You have to get a picture of this and send it to Dave on Facebook, mate. Because, you know, this is. I want my money back. This is just shocking. Why not just take the cover off when he gave me the axle and inspect it? You don't. It works on an element of trust. And obviously, it's not mistrust because Dave wouldn't have known, but when you're paying this much money for an axle. When you're demanding this much money from Axel, you've, it's ruined, mate. Look at the state of that. Get a torch a bit more in for the viewers at home. Pete's pissed off. He spent a lot of money here, not only with Rich, but and, with, and my time, and the Axel purchase cost. Even the pinions, it's a joke. You see where the water lines have been in the it? It's dead. 
That's dead. You'd have to shot blast it, everything and hope it's not pitted. And I think everything will be pitted on that. Looking at it, wasting my, my wasting my time. Does it feel the rust on the teeth? There's clobs of rust on each tooth. That's shocking. The show must go on though. Yeah. Turn it. You just got to carry on going, haven't you? Against the snow, the ice, the rain. <laughs> the show must go on. You just got to, it's like going up a mountain with like a pickaxe and a big furry coat with all the blizzard in your face, freezing your skin, looking upwards like a never ending mountain. Stuff coming at you left, right and centre, sleet, snow, rain, ice, wind, gravity, everything. Do you carry on or you just fall in a ball and die? Right, go on, pull that. Yep, new bearings. Him trying to be Phil Daniels and he's not. <laughs> <laughs> Like off park life, off Quadrophenia, and he's not Phil Daniels, bad as the fucking. What you see, he's doing? Oh, oh, yeah, that's good. I knew that had an odd shift. Fucking that thing rotate. It will go, but it's. Yeah, we have got it in park life, but. Get it out of park now, mate. No, get it out of park. You might have to unmesh that gear. Hold on. We don't know what. Well. We do know what we're doing, but we don't, and we could quickly find out what we're supposed to be doing because we're not stupid. Let's just see what we can do. There's some some of the haters. Yes, you are stupid. The car and the life are. So. I don't know why they, they carry on watching though. If they hate it so much, why do they carry on watching? Yeah. I know why they do because they secretly love it and they can't confess to themselves. Whoa, they love watching. Look at the rust on the edge of there. Oh no! Oh please, no! I can't take any more. Friday the thirteenth has gone. Halloween's over. What is this? We've done, we've done Halloween, mate. Yeah. We've had four trick or treaters, and I gave them all fifty pence and um, an Adam's family sherbet bag. And I don't mean drugs. I mean sherbet bags. Chocolate laxatives work well with kids. No, they they make a real effort. They, they, you know, anyone that's going to go out in the rain and they've all dressed up, little kids and the mums and dads are with them. I know sometimes it's a pain, but watch them teeth, I know, please. I know. That's probably a new crown wheel, that. <coughs> Dave's specials. <laughs> oh, why, oh, why, the horror, the pain. It's just it's rusted on the side. Yeah, it's fused itself in. It's just a piece of metal. Just a piece of metal. Just a challenge. We love a challenge. We love, we love, we love the drama, really. Uh, uh, the drama. Uh, looks like about the, the trots. Really. I mean, uh. If it was all nice and clean, we'd have no drama. We're drama queens. Well, I am. See you in a sec. The daddy bar. And we're going to be on daddy bar camp. Oh, extract this unit. Toyed. You're not surprised the bearing races or the bearing casings are fused into the axle itself. Yeah. Let's watch that brake line. Yeah. Hold on for the views at home. I'm jagging them all over the place. Sorry, viewers. Right, that's not taken. Go at this naughty, but go there. Oh, you sure? Yeah, yeah, you'll be fine. You won't hurt it. It's hard and steel. <laughs> oh, it's still stuck. Hey, put a little bit on your side. That needs even, even force there, Rich. You just because I'm, I'm skewing over into you. You see, it's got to be parallel extraction. You level, all right. Oh yeah, she's coming. She's coming. Go there again. Well, you know. Sorry about the shaky, but I. Viewers, I'm on. Right, I'm on the catch. I don't think you got it yet. You still, it's not letting go. Right, my side's out. 
I tried for the viewers to keep that. This looks nice, we've got no rust in this one. They're brand new then. They're bearings in here. What's, what's your facing like now? They're okay there. It's in there, it looks like we've got trouble. Right, what about the teeth? Have they still got the coating on? Teeth are all right. Gone away with it there. Planet gears look alright on them, but planet gears have got heavy rust on them there. But yeah, a lot of rust there on them. Planet gears, it's whether it's pitted, it's the question. Yeah, we won't know until we clean them up. Right. It's in there that looks the horrors. Look at the tide mark at the top. Mm. Tide mark, it's been under, been in a deep blue sea. But right. they, them, them teeth face haven't rotted. No. See, the thing is, they do have a coating on them, you know. Yeah, they will. Axle yeah. experts, feel, feel free to join in the, the uh, live chat now. We can take the car out of park and spin that and see if that's where the noise is. Well, it will be. Keep on typing away there, super chatters. Come and bang some money and get me money back. Help me. Struggling here. Smash them, smash them buttons, and um, there's hundred on, so that means hundred at five. Get me my money back. I'm begging now. I don't have to be begging. I'm gonna go around and begging. Well, I am begging. Come on, cough, cough, chop, chop. What do you say, Richard? Yes, yeah, even right. Richard's gonna bang some cash in. Always do. They sell his body at twelve o'clock inside the chippy. <laughs> Let's go. That's to love Easter, baby. Okay, Rich, is that the noise? There's no noise. You having a busman's alley under there? Yeah, I live in the rain. I live in the tree. Right, so we've got the pinion gear. Pinion gear off. Drive flange off to get the pinion gear out. And then we'll do radio silence, and viewers at home, you can have a listen. Can you okay. hear that? Well, that's the noise. So we can pull this out now. I'll do it. Oh, Richard's got that. Through your tap and head the other way. Yeah, I mean. I got one last little sticky bit. Take that out. Oh my god, it's destroyed. <laughs> oh no, there's your problem. Problem. Oh, there ain't no bearing, mate. <laughs> Dear me. It's been, I think it's been stored nose down and filled with water. A lovely job that they probably did. Well, loveliest job they probably did. And then ruined it. So, <laughs> right. That's bearing is out, Richard's got it, I knocked it out from the back, this is the noisy bear. No, I can't, that's the noise. It's just knacker. That's what was initially, no, it's finished. No, sorry. Thank you and good night. Nice knowing you. That would have been a nice new bearing. Mm. Hang on, Billy. Let's hold it perpendicular to the camera. Flat to the camera lens. That's it. There goes the old race. Nearly straight through me final one. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Expensive. Right, so knock the race out. So, was that that race extracting tube? That's your uh, homemade Cortina front plug one. Oh, yeah, well, it seems to work. It's good for that. We've got the race out of this one. So, basically, what we're going to do is put the pinion 
the original pinion back in that's in a de-rusting solution we know this isn't going to be perfect it's going to get the car back running again until we send this to a professional rebuilder because not only did he silicon on the back plate he's also siliconed in the, the front the front pinion seal now you could say it's bolt and braces uh, by doing that which I understand, but the silicon that he used was like just like cheap and nasty silicon, weren't it? Yeah, window seal, wasn't it? Yeah. So we knocked the race out of this. We're going to keep this, well, keep this race in the other axle because that that marries the pinion, which is in a de-rusting solution. Now I've got this very good de-rusting solution. Get it if you can. It's called X Rust Seven. About the best you can get. So we got that and. We can water it down. It's a pretty heavy solution. It's about a quarter solution versus water. And then we're just going to try and take the edge off this. This bearing here, I'm looking for friction scoring from when it was locked when we drove out. But definitely the very front bearing scored. This one might have got away with it. It wasn't as rusty as the front one. So basically what we're going to do is put it all back together. It was a, probably a noisy axle, but not ridiculously noisy like it was what you just heard there. It should be just a whiny axle again. So we're back to square one. We have found someone on Facebook which we think can rebuild this. Very difficult to find an axle rebuilder. So Ruby's original axle will be after sent away and get properly rebuilt. And when that comes back, take this one off rebuild this one as a backup axle for the fleet and put it into stores with oil in it to stop it from seizing and back to square one so that race is knocked out this pinion can be cleaned up reinserted back in ruby's um pinion seal was knackered which is why ruby wept oil so that needed doing anyway so we're not actually lost anything we've just learned a lot which is good it's good to learn it's an expensive learning lesson considering that the axle that I bought was ready, supposed to be plug and play and ready to go. So we will be seeking some compensation for this. Okay. Let's get back and put it all back together, Rich. We're not doing too bad, I guess. What do you reckon? <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep that copper hammer in hand. If you feel sick, there's a bucket here. I do. So. <laughs> <laughs> you join us under the car as Richard cleans up the inner face in the casting to receive the race off Ruby and they we're going to use the bearing off Ruby so it's a matching set whilst they were whiny though we're just going to be reintroducing the wine from Ruby into this axle. If indeed it was the front that was whining, it probably was. It had a pitted gear on Ruby though, didn't it? And it had a pitted crown wheel gear, we'll show you that. Crown and pinion gears are pitted. So, it might be about halfway in between a half noisy axle again. This, this assumes that the crush washer, when we reassemble it, we can torque that uh, pinion bolt back up without continually collapsing the crush washer. We have took a picture and counted the threads to try and re-emulate putting on the pinion bolt. Again, it's all approximation. We don't expect this to achieve results, but you never know. Sometimes you can hit lucky and just pure bit of luck, you can end up putting it back together and you actually think, wow, it's pretty quiet, we'll live with it. You just don't know. But one thing is for sure, and nothing can be as noisy as what we just <laughs> experienced. The alternative, of course, was to just simply put Ruby's axle straight back on and walk away saying, well, that was a waste of time. Perseverance. But curiosity gets the better of us, and we think, well, why not treat this as a kind of experiment and share the knowledge with people out in YouTube land? Of course, the armchair experts, they're going to be in now. Well, you don't do this, you don't do that. That's good because they're people who are helping us with their expertise, and I would never underestimate or... Um, devalue or uh, disrespect someone who does this as a profession I would always listen to them but someone who doesn't who sits on the armchair thinking they know it all but actually does nothing with their life shoving their two peas within they just get deleted 
keyboard warriors. The keyboard warriors, yeah. Yeah, they keep on watching though because they're addicted. Because secretly they don't want to admit it. It's like a secret fetish. They don't want to admit it. Can't. I love watching their YouTube channels and then sending nasty comments. Makes me feel good. My life's so empty and my project's ground to a halt and I've done nothing for 10 years. Makes me feel good. You can see that Pete's on one today. <laughs> <laughs> He's on one, isn't he? Oh, dear me. We like having a rant at the radio as well, though, don't we? Yeah, yeah, we don't like the radio. I think Richard actually likes it when I'm in a bad mood. <laughs> <laughs> I should just be myself. But if I was being myself, I'd be swearing. Um, <laughs> not gratuitously swearing, but... I call it creative swearing, artistic swearing. Yes, we like artistic <laughs> swearing. swearing. Yeah. Not just like for the sake of it, more because it's justified. I mean, swearing exists because it There's exists for a reason. reason. <laughs> There's a re it's what, not what you do, it's the way that you do it. Let's see if we can get this race in, folks. Just keep on quaffing and typing away. I see. Ali Max drunk as a lord there. What are you talking about, Ali? Eh? It's making no sense. That Scottish five has turned back up. <laughs> I traded it for a tenner, Ali, at Oban Airport. Yeah, everyone's back. Good to see everybody back. Hello, everybody. Peter Barker not liking Skyfall music. How dare you, Barker? How dare you not like Skyfall? He replaced the soundtrack with someone else. That's cheap, that. Oh, I'll see you. Anyway, back to this job. Okay, an old bearing, ground down. The old bearing, wh whose race was that? It's this stuff, it has. Shagged one. race. We'll ground it down. Use that to knock the new one in, or the old one in. The new, but the old. Let me crawl on the hands and knees for you. The things I do for these YouTubers. Things I do for you. Right. We're in it, you see. We're knocking in. This is Ruby's race. Going into Dave's axle, which now becomes Ruby's axle, I suppose. How far has it gone? Halfway. Halfway. To paradise. Yeah. I'll swing the hand one time now. Yeah. Especially this way. It's the fingers. You've already hit it once. Go on that. See it shifting. Are you there yet? Yeah, yeah. No, not yet. Yeah. Yeah. Right, we just scotched it. There was loads of rust inside here, so we've just been taking the rust out with scotch pad and some degreaser. The soup is served and ready, so it's cleaned up that messy pinion. Richard's just cleaning up that carrier, it's got most of it. There was quite a bad impact point on it, which this would probably never even get. The whole carrier is in here as well. So as I said, this is that very nice rust solution. We're going to keep, we'll decant this. This is diluted version of it. We'll decant that into a little 5 litre. It's started to clean that up good. You can see the teeth there. Do look damaged we're gonna to have to just see if that just won't wipe off but everything else let's uh took the edge off it I'm hoping these bearings have survived should have done just spoke to Alan and he said Dave's probably left it in the in the rain 
so we'll just have to see how it goes back together but definitely that pinion those pinion bearings were gone so there's nothing we can do except put the second hand ones on there's the crush washer that has cleaned down the best we can do folks we're going to reassemble this now and see how noisy it is off we go reassembly time did, did we show them the race removal tool yeah yeah okay so off we go with your dairy with your dairy lee duncombs done this comes out of the acid dip or whatever it's called the de-rusting solution it's not acidic actually and then compressed air to blow the excess then some ep90 in an oil can so just well don't tell anyone it could be engine oil but anyway there we go it's it's we think the bearing's got a fighting chance don't forget the front bearing is ruby's old one this is actually a new one so it's a shame that we didn't have a brand new front bearing but we haven't so this is going back together we'll see what happens certainly a lot cleaner than what it was there's the crush washer there just slide that on down so that's your collapsible spacer ring takes a hundred and 50 foot pound to start crushing it down and then between 71 and 86 to lock up your pinion nut against the crush washer and that sets the mesh um, distance the more you crush that the more you engage the mesh of the crown wheel and pinion thus setting the backlash with this so that's what happens if you they are only usable once we're hoping because these are the same pair going in back into the original axle that this crush setting is okay and we're just going to go up till we hit about 71 to 80 pounds on the torque wrench on the pinion nut and that should just bring it back to where we disassembled it assuming that they assembled it correctly we should be back to where we were although there could be elements rogue elements that creep in and we don't know because we're not axle builders we can only do what we can in our hands today and i am lining up an axle build specialist indeed to give this axle at a ruby a rebuild and if this one is unusable at least we've got a guy building us a fresh one and then it's another day to just swap the axles over in fact we'll probably do it in an afternoon now because we've got quicker let's get this in you join us now with a slightly cleaner casing internals and richard now does the limbo he's had it he's had his lilt had your lilt totally tropical taste in that now you've got a wumba 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 get your belly stuck on the oh, but it's, you see you know but that's good cushioning for when the axle stands collapse right my job is to feed feed him are you hungry richard do you want to feed an opinion that's a long opinion are you hungry richard i'll feed you a pre-greased pinion and crush washer if you want you've got a flange plate ready well dry flange in my hand flange and in my hand I'm coming through to you, engaging first and second seals. I'm feeling the magic, Richard. I'm feeling that feels better. Uh, hold still. I'm definitely feeling the magic. I'm just trying to move my hand out of the screen for the viewers' benefit. Always trying to think of viewers when you're filming, folks. If you're doing a YouTube channel. You've got to constantly remind yourself. It's very easy to get carried away when you're filming and forget the reason that you're filming is so that someone can watch it. Right. So, you know. Sounds like a rumbling old big end's gone there, lad. It's better, but I uh, had this awful feeling it's still going to well, have well, a, well, well, well. <laughs> a, a, a hum in the bum. Let's see. What else can you do? It'll be better. But Sawdust? Yeah, this way a few, sawdust. A few, a few rags in there. Yeah, a few chewed up rags in there. Okay. Right now, so now what we do is put the carrier in, and then then put the brakes back on, stick the handbrake on, and you can torque up that pinion nut, can't you? Yeah, so I might actually just lock it with two bolts for now and just wind it up a bit. So okay then. Make sure it's right. semi mesh for that. Leave us. Work. Yeah, that's a bit boring to film. Leave that with us. Not saying Richard's boring, of course. I'm just saying there. We're going to lock two the nuts, processes. yeah, two bolts in the uh, flange, then lock your little crowbar between the two bolts so that you can start to get at least a bit of purchase on that pinion nut. We'll be right back, folks. You'll see just above the pinion wheel, there's a little tube section, and I squirt 
EP90 in to that. I'll show you what I mean with my fingers. Here, what happens with that when it swishes around, that actually drains, that funnels oil into the front uh, bearing. So you get a constant cycle of oil around the front bearing as well. So that's like a catchment tube, if you will, there inside your casing that sort of creates a bit of a, uh, what would you call, circulation of the EP90. This pinion, to me, feels we've now gone up to £71, pound, but it seems to me to be too tight. Oh, we're, not, we're not axle builders, this is just to get the car back rolling again. I'm uh, about 50% confident. <laughs> this could be a shocking noise, but curiosity is also driving me almost liking the experimental aspect of it as well but that's no justification for a knackered axle RV pressurized tins. Squirting now. It's just so good. So simple, so effective. Burton gasket on. Burton gasket on. I think it's not handed. I think it's handed. It seems to be lining up. Up you go on the right hand side, you are in. In, in, in. Wayne Baker is in. You are in. Let me film these lot. Listen to this, folks. Whoa. Oh, yes. Incoming. Fantastic. Off to feed on the um, the salt marsh. I think the pink-footed geese. I'm not sure. I think they were pink-footed. I think that's the pink-footed goose. Off for an evening feed onto the salt marshes, and then they'll return to roost back at Martin Mere in Lancashire. When I Google that up, that's the Canadian geese that come in from the north, from the down from Iceland, and they. Um, seek warmer climates and better food down in Lancashire at Martin Mere and the surrounding fields and farmlands where there's plenty of f lovely food, basically unfrosty fields for them to dig around in, although they don't actually dig around, but pink-footed geese there. And what they were doing there was they were just nipping out to the salt marshes where there's even more food. And then later on, they'll come back and roost in safety and so that works. Okay. Fantastic sight. Always reminds me of September, October time when you've heard the first flocks arrive. You can track them on radar. Absolutely spectacular sight. I've grown up here all my life, and that is a childhood feeling and sound when you hear those geese coming in in large formations like that. Fantastic. Nature is fantastic. Much better than. Uh, 3.75 Atlas axles. I'm sure you'll agree. Right, we're nearly done. I'll just put the roll bar, anti roll bar back on. That's just the both sides. And then the chard goes 15. So it only can be reached with a spanner unless anyone knows a special tool. 
15s and rotate round single piece prop of course one degree slope on the prop 5.5 nose up on the axle 4.5 nose down on the tail shaft of the auto box 4.5 on the nose of the crank pulley giving us operating angles 0.5 Or is it one? One. One degree. One degree. Bearing operating angle on the EJs. Nice. And that's what we were doing, of course, when we fitted the axle. We found that it was waterlogged. Back to the beginning again, 24 hours later. Do you want the handbrake on? No, I don't. Next and final job, bunk plug out EP90 in, about two, two and a half syringes worth to top up. Lock in between the bolts. Ford do a special tool for this. It's basically a, it's basically a hollowed out flat bar which fits over the heads of the bolts. And locks on or use a crowbar. Of course, this uh, video could apply to the Mark 1 and Mark 2 Escort boys as well as 4 and 5 Cortina owners. If you're running ax Atlas axles and you're playing with them like we are, and we, we are playing, we're not professionals. So, those armchair warriors. Take a pearl and go to bed. <laughs> they're probably they're probably there in front of like a two bar fire, half a bottle of scotch, <laughs> and uh, a big uh, overflowing ashtray next. Yeah, time. and uh, well, this guy I know doesn't smoke, but yeah, I know what you mean. But um, the telly's still tuned on like uh, analog because he's not got a, a latest you know DVD. Just like white noise, <laughs> two bar fire on, half a bottle of scotch, cheap cheap scotch from the offie pissed and then giving it his pennies worth to pete because he hates me guts <laughs> Dick, dickhead thumbs down with all the different accounts it makes me laugh all them different accounts log on to one thumbs down log out log on to the other account thumbs down and then just to just to top it all off going anyone else that's anywhere near doing a courtine and hit them as well <laughs> As you can see, it's a bad day for BC. <laughs> see in a minute when we we start at the engine and see how noisy it is. See in a sec. Wow. The moment of truth is coming. Just jack yourself up with, with two litres of EP90, Rich. Just straight into your vein. Straight into your veins. That'll help that'll help with your stiff back. I think I went about two pieces in my system at the moment. Yeah. That'll help with your stiff knees. Just jack up. Oh, must decant this uh, stuff into containers because this can't be this could be used many times this uh, rust treatment i'll remind you what it was in case we didn't x rust 7 by nch not the software company x rust 7 neutral rust remover decanting back in now i'm gonna get a funnel and then this one into a larger five liter tub to be used in the future let's go get some funnels look at the state of the ep90 that came out from all the gunge in the axle, of course, we wish we would have opened it up. And the moral of the story is, have a look in your axle before you fit it. Don't just trust people. Assumption makes an ass out of you and at me. You're jacking up one last time. It's going to dribble out onto the floor. Right, I need to be ready, folks, with the bum plug, so... We'll catch you in a sec. We're filled with EP9. We're ready to road test oh, it. Here we go. See in a sec. What's got to be done? It's got to be done. Clean yourself up, boy. Are you there, boy? Are you there, boy? I know you're there, boy. Let's go on the road for a noisy road test. Whoa, 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 whoa
and other superlatives. See you in a sec on the road. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can't hear anything yet. A hell of a lot quieter. We don't know. It's all right at 30. A little bit of a I should come down, but not bad. A slight clump there, but that's normal. That happens all the time on all the gearboxes. So this is the test. We can only do 50 now. But it was a horror show yesterday at 50 on here. Yeah. It's hard because your imagination starts to tune in on things which probably might have been there anyway. And you can never tell the difference between gearbox wine and axle wine, but it's not mental. You don't know if it's road noise. This is the problem. You tend to do like a memory reset when you do something like this. And you forget what noise actually used to be there when the original axle was on. And you can, you can get that confused. But at the moment, I'm not feeling anything or hearing anything bad. Overdrive's just come in. Pretty, pretty good to go so far. Certainly usable now till we get the other axle rebuilt. Yeah, I'm hearing it. A little hum in the bomb, but nothing bad. That was on it when I, on the other axle though. Yeah. Same. I don't know if that's gearbox. Or Talk me through it. We've got two two minds on it here. Uh, no overrun, definitely nothing like the noise it was making. Sounded pretty good up to now. Certainly for a quick fix anyway.
original box, this is the question. I don't think it is, to be honest. Original uh, action. That's what now, I don't think it is. It might even get better. Right, let's check them other gears as you go round. Planet gears seem alright. Yeah, for the, for the differential. if we'd have had that, those new pinion bearings in. Yeah. Just let these cars go, knock our average speed, that should do it. Well, we'll call that a success, I think, folks. Yeah. Yeah, so, I didn't know you were still... <laughs> I didn't know you were still... <laughs> suspension designed to try and keep the nose level upon it doesn't you know it's doesn't the way that the arms up. work if you look it tries to always keep the nose the best that it can level uh, in terms of the angle to the uh, the prop How that went. The prop shaft sitting at 0 0.2 degrees, engine's putting down three. You can't get a flange measurement on the um, diff because we've got the prop shaft attached, but we might bring the diff up just one degree. So I've got three pointing down, I got an angle there of, of 0.1, sorry, 0 0.5, 0 0.2, sorry, 0.2. So that probably I could calculate what that is actually by doing that, but it's it's in the tolerance. Uh, right, we're on originally on fuel line. Problem with this, you can see that's break breaking up there. I I, the biggest break I saw was here, which was just yeah. without, without having to bend it. You didn't need to bend it. Oh, you just had to just go like that, and you can see it crack. Hang on, viewers at home, let's try and get a focus lock there. So this is that braided stuff and just by simply kinking the pipe it opens up a crack you can just about see it on your screens folks so that's that stuff don't get it off your car if you've got it on now go and remove it as quickly as, as possible there's only a question of time before whether there's a fracture or stress point sorry whether there's a stress point or bend you'll get a fracture and then you'll start smelling it. you'll get an early warning you'll smell petrol around your car if you do that's the most likely reason, especially if it's coming in from the fuel area, fuel filling area there. Look, it just, just breaks to pieces. It's just no good. It's gone. And this is what? How long since I did Ruby? Three, four years? Yeah. That was a brand new pipe. It's useless. Just throw it in the bin. 
All right, we're gonna we're finished on this video. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, what we called, I don't know what I called this series. Was it? Um, ru oh, routine routine maintenance. It was. So we're in the workshop with Richard. Routine routine with Richard. There you go. The all the R's. Routine maintenance with Richard Valentini, Pete on the camera and occasionally helping. We'll catch you on another video. Hope you enjoyed all your drinks tonight on the Super Chat. And where's all the Super Chat? We're trying to raise money here. Come on, last minute, dig deep. You've not been the bar that long. See you in a sec, PC over and out. Call to see another video soon. See you soon. Bye, Richard. You know when there's like a gap after the video at the end of the chat and then yeah. there's always something that comes on after. Welcome. I thought you said good night, Richard. He's back. <laughs> right, we've got two faults. Well, not two faults. One fault and one bit of explanation, uh, a benefit for you, viewers at home. I want, I'm going to explain the angles again. I don't think I did a good enough job of explaining it. So I'm going to try and attempt to explain pinion angles yet again but we spotted something we richard heard it before i did oh i heard it in scotland i heard this wow 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 noise and i thought it was coming from the back which it could have been because we had a one noisy axle this axle's now improved the situation listen to this wheel as soon as richard finishes the muscles from brussels are back as he pumps on a trolley jack he's back with a jack Jack attack. Okay, so let's drop that down. Well, the reason we're doing this, by the way, is um, not to show you the wheel bearing, but to get the. We're going to drop. The, drop. It's all rhyming today. Drop the prop. Because I'm going to take the final on all four wheels measurements of all the angles, then talk you through those angles, okay? Just to show you how important it is to get your. Drive shaft angles right. So is uh, a wheel. By the way, listen to this. Radio silence, from Richard. All right. I thought I heard something, but Richard definitely picked up on it. Okay. And you might think that sounds great, which it does. These are new wheel bearings, by the way, with less than twenty thousand miles on them. Listen to this one. Spin me up, Rich. I always get him to do the hard jobs, why? Ooh! That's the noise. We've got a noisy wheel bearing. So, on to eBay to order a wheel bearing from Quinton Hazel. We may as well do the pair. That's horrible. That won't be helping our drive. That happened in Scotland. Okay, so that's that. Now, Front on axle stands, back's gonna go on axle stands, drop the prop shaft, take then drop it onto the wheels again. I've got to try and just twirl under the car and get those important laden weight readings because even though you try and simulate the laden weight with the jack, you can never get the same reading as if you're on the tires and wheels, so I want to finalise the prop. I got a feeling I need to go up by about one degree on the prop nose up just to give me that tolerance, although it didn't vibrate um, at speed. So we actually were okay, but this is just to satisfy curiosity and also to explain to you exactly what I mean about pinion angles. I'll wipe the dry board, whiteboard clean, and I'll try and uh, show you again. Okay, we're going on there to do our last calculation. Here we go. So, digi unit just here, Richard stuck underneath the car. Floor is level at 0 0.09, whatever you want to call it. So, everything's relative. The car's parallel. <coughs> Chassis measurement shows it 0 0.3. So I'm going to stick this on the flange of the axle. Where the hell is that? That's a problem with the screen, it's that small. I can't see where your hand is. Starting. Pointing it upwards. <laughs> Pointing upwards. That's the camera doing that. Absolute <laughs> nightmare. Oh, there we go. Right, put this on the side of there. 
it's got to be level and it says it's got to be level 5.9 it reads the flange sticks upward 5 6.1 5.9 6 so it's it's 6 sticking up because it just moves slightly as you go round but it's I'd call that 6 it's pointing up in the air the axle so now we're going to slot the prop shaft on and mark these numbers down so we've got 6 pointing up and now we'll get the number the slope of the axle now is that axle uh, prop pointing upwards or downwards not one. the thing will tell me which way it's pointing it's giving me a reading of one degree but I don't know if it's one degree down I tell you what I'll do I'll move this it's going up one degree right so it's an upward slope of one degree mm, yeah because when I move this back down that way, it goes to zero. Yeah. It's very difficult because it doesn't tell you on my screen which way I'm pointing. Oh yeah, it does. It does. It's a diagram. Right, it's pointing up. It's pointing upward 1.1. Okay. Yeah. And the diff is pointing up 6. Right, I'm coming out of the car. I'm going to come out of the car. Put these numbers down. So I'll write these down, the flange of the car, of the axle, is up 6 degrees, the prop points up, what did I say for the prop, 1 degree? One, 2, 1, 1.2. 1.1 up, now the engine, 4 and a half. The engine was four and a half, we think. I can get this under and check. <coughs> it depends if how you zero the meter, though, because each time you zero it, you get a different number relative to the ground. But four point, like five pointing down. So the engine points five degrees down at the moment. And you point six up. So you're pointing up one degree higher than me yeah. I'm pointing down you've got a difference of 0.5 between the two I think no you've got one between the two yeah I go down a degree and you're up a degree yeah so that's okay so they cancel each other out and the degree itself is, is found on the uh, prop shaft so you are five pointing down which I think is bang on I don't think you can do any more than that they're per perfectly countering each other out I'm not sure why you need the measurement of the prop shaft I thought you'd only need the measurement of the way that it points up at one end and the way that it points down at the other I don't see what's the point of taking the measurement of the prop that's the only thing I don't understand why so uh, uh they're virtually flush those angles so they're saying you deduct your prop shaft angle from the that would give an operating angle of four which it doesn't and an operating angle of five I don't understand that at all uh, it's double dutch to me. I'm still confused. Because <laughs> by the time they both... If you're pointing down five... I, still, I don't understand it. I'm going to have to go on the internet. I do not understand it at all. I'm completely lost. Never mind. It's a job for another time. Except to say that all I thought was you had the diff pointing up the engine points down by exactly the same amount it doesn't matter what the prop shaft does and that would have been it so i don't i don't get it uh, there's, a, there's a total range difference of 11 degrees between the two so it's just i'm gonna have to go and do some research I, I, that's why i redid this video because i just cannot work it out 
Oh, I'm not able to do any more now. Sit over and out. That's my jacket. <laughs> I didn't think it got back that much. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be a good try.